All right, let's watch it. All the haters will say it's fake. Ah, the Instagram clout. This guy, I hate. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, I hated all of these people. Oh my god. Era, much simpler times. Boonk was stealing lobsters right out of the tank and destroying his local Dunkin' Donuts. Supreme Patty was squeezing lemons in his eyes and having a smoke break with Santa. Danielle Bergoli, Woe Vicky, and Lil Tay were the laughing stocks of the internet, yet somehow making- Bro, only Daniel Bergoli out of all of those people made out like a bandit, and that's because everyone is a creepy pervert, okay? Straight up. Straight the up. All right, let's watch the uh, clout chase era on Instagram. Making full-time careers from it. Long neck, wide neck, holy God, we're uh, just doing what they do. It wasn't all a spectacle though. There were some gems in there. We had the Shiggy Show, Fatboy SSE, Reggie Baby, and Kush Poppy, along with many others making genuine content. Bro, I literally, I hated every part of this. This was the worst era on the internet, straight up. That millions of people loved. On top of this, we had the emergence of SoundCloud rap, which was so deeply intertwined with social media viral culture that it was hard to tell the difference between an influencer and a rapper. However, whether it was genuine content creation or straight up clout chasing nonsense, the Instagram clout era is officially over. And with the Island Boys being here and gone within months, I don't think it will ever come back. Stay hydrated. Before I start, there are plenty of content creators that I'll mention in this video still making a living through Instagram independently. In this video, I'm referring to the cultural relevance and interconnectedness of a number of creators that were exploding in virality from 2017 to 2019. How their careers exploded to the highest of the highs and literally everyone knew about them, and all the factors that led to the downfall of this era. YouTube has been the dominant video-based platform on the internet since 2008. However, when the app Vine exploded in popularity in 2013, we realized how big of a demand there was for short-form video content on social media. Unfortunately, behind the scenes, Vine was a train wreck of a company that created one good thing but refused to innovate. Instagram launched its 15 second video feature compared to Vine's 6 second videos, so creators had literally more than double the potential for content. Popular Viners like Layla- I think one of the funniest parts about this was that like they demonstrably were just so bad. Like people that were funny in 7 seconds were doing like really just awful like 15 seconds or you know a minute long on facebook oh they were so bad they just could not fill up a minute and yet because it also corresponded to the facebook video faucet turning on gorillion views on everything gorillion views la ponds jake and logan paul king batch and jerry perp drank slowly drifted away from vine and would focus more on youtube and instagram by late 2016, Vine had nothing more it could offer to creators, and it was shut down. However, these Viners had a much different sense of humor than what we saw emerge in 2017. It was very PG-13. I don't really have good enough words to describe their humor, so you can see for yourself. Hey, let me see your phone for a second. Okay. Time's up. That's one second. That's all I meant. That's what I meant. What? What we learned. Go, go, go. I gotta ask you something. What? Are you uh, ah, that's the f LeBrant! Isn't it? Isn't this the LeBrant? La baby? This is it, right? This is the la baby maker. Got like 11 babies. Labortion, dude. The <laughs> labortion guy. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Are you sleeping? A lot of it was relatable humor with a bit of a creative twist aimed at teenagers. The skits were usually filmed very well with added sound effects and creative techniques, but the jokes. <sighs> Wow, no Cody mentioned, by the way. I mean, Cody literally is from the Vine generation. A lot of you little Zoomers don't even know that. You're like, huh, Cody Co is my favorite. I love his reacts on YouTube. Like, this is literally where he popped off. This was the, he was a Viner, dude. That's when I met Cody was when he had like 200,000 YouTube subs. He was like, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Vine is dying. And then he destroyed it on YouTube. I guess a lot of those essays are from Vine, right? A lot of the essays I like uh, are are all Vine boys. Cody, Drew, Danny, and Curtis are all Vine boys. Yeah, I like I like a lot of those guys. So that's a good thing. Watch this old Cody vid. Couples cringe. Twenty one year old me. No, I'm not gonna do that. There were two other popular comedians emerging. 
The Shiggy Show, and Fatboy SSE. These guys were not Viners. They actually both started out as artists. They were the next generation of comedy on Instagram. Their comedy was R-rated and aimed more at adults. Kind of a notch up from the Viners. Shiggy and Fatboy usually had low quality production, but were genuinely funnier. Plus they had interests in sneakers, basketball, dancing, and really all things intertwined with hip hop. Throughout the social media era, rappers have essentially been the gatekeepers of what's cool and status quo. I was about to say. I don't like that. It's so bad. That's fine. So when the rappers wanted to be connected with the lit influencers on social media, they became extremely popular as well. Shiggy and Fatboy pretty quickly had a lot of poppin' rappers following them on social media, and they became sort of the first tried and true Instagram comedians. Now we had the Viner PG-13 humor on one side with high quality skits, and the Instagram R-rated humor on the other side with low quality filming but better Ugh. jokes, which was poppin' in the hip-hop community. Whenever there is a bar set, someone is always going to push it. There became a demand for content that was a little more crass, a little more shocking and in your face. In 2017, we got exactly that. The TV MA humor came with low quality videos and low quality humor, but they were basically willing to say and do anything for shock value. Jimmy Tatra was pretty big too, no? No, Jimmy, uh, I don't know if Jimmy ever did Vine, but he was, he was, Jimmy was always popping on YouTube. If according to Jimmy, it was always high quality skits for every frat boy in America, okay? Jimmy was an early YouTube guy. I remember quite literally watching him at the frat house, okay? And he he stayed on YouTube, stayed on YouTube for a very long dude. I'm literally like I'm so old. These guys that these guys that are my friends, I first watched and then became and then became friends with and then now they're like they're still it's just wild. Fine is cringe and unfunny as fuck. Yeah. How did I meet him? Um I don't even know, dude. It's been years. Value. The year 2017 started off with the extreme virality of Danielle Bergoli's Catch Me Outside Dr. Phil episode. Stupid people have gotten famous plenty of times before her, but the whole reason she got popular was because she was an ungrateful, rude little girl who wanted to fight everyone, which was funny as hell. <laughs> Instead of being embarrassed by the public bullying, she encouraged it, then built a massive following on social media just continuing the same behavior displayed on Dr. Phil. A few months later, we had the extreme blow up of the rapper Lil Pump. While making songs was his actual career, he became mostly known for his social media antics. He had a ridiculous image, terrible face tats, colored hair, obsessed with gaudy and expensive designer clothing. He would pose videos of him doing drugs, destroying hotel rooms, starting unwarranted beefs, and basically anything that would get attention. We were entering the stage of not knowing the difference between a social media star and a rapper. In the summer of 2017, we saw the emergence of Supreme Patty and Boonk. What happened? Is, are they dead now? I know, didn't he have like a porn or something, Boonk? I, I literally don't know. Did these guys die? I, I'm, I'd am be surprised if this dude is still alive. Like, Again, both of them started out as rappers. Patty was mostly doing skits that involved him consuming grass. Sorry for all the censorship that's about to take place. He lit up in public, with homeless people, with cops. <laughs> Boonk, on the other hand, was quite literally just filming himself stealing. From fast food restaurants, sneaker stores, Best Buy, the whole time yelling Boonk Gang. These two were constantly trying to outdo themselves to keep up with the viral high. Patty's stunts got crazier, and Boonk just kept raising the stakes with his theft. As well as just any ridiculous scenario that they could put on social media so that people would be like, What the fuck? And I don't know how the fuck people watch Patty, Supreme Patty. I feel like I just couldn't even watch it because like every time i saw him like put stuff on his face like i was like dude you have open acne scars like you're literally making it worse i cannot watch this it always felt like i was like i was watching a dude just like his face up further like the burn oh my god it's okay content it was disgusting dude i i was so disgusted it was so awful same time frame we had whoa vicky go viral for taking an ancestry test and claiming that she was 25 percent black she went on a tirade identifying as a black woman despite her appearance as white and her mother being white <laughs> she just black i don't like okay. that color really yeah okay she's black so that, that sounds about right yeah. all right so because a lot of people that seems to be one of the most contentious things about you is that people just refuse to believe that you're actually black well, Vicky was the first to be inspired by Daniel Bergoli and essentially copy her viral formula. Let the world just laugh at me. There was no comedy, no production value, just 100% look how ridiculous I am. And people were eating it up. This is a tutorial on how to be a gangster. First you gotta get the look. And real niggas always keep a few bands on them. Danielle is now Bad Baby and dropped a song called Hi Bitch which racked up 50 million views in two- Bro. 
Bro, Daniel Bergoli is like, it wasn't the first time, but it was definitely like when I, in my mind, I was like, it's over. The music industry can make anyone, dude. As long as you're viral, like what we are taking for granted, like with TikTok now, Daniel Bergoli was the prototype. As long as you have clout, you can be, you can turn into a superstar. As long as you have clout, the music industry, literally, they can pull you they can they can whip you into shape and turn you into something right and Gucci flip flops are classic and better than anything kendrick has made okay dude that was the, the whitest thing i've ever heard in my entire life but like i mean it wasn't even it wasn't even that bad but like it, it's good it, it was just it was just so obvious it also was like probably such a big you to like black people in general that like you had you had this like white person who's a culture vulture straight up in like the most obvious most transparent way possible and the music industry was just like, yeah, we're going to make this person literally, uh, you know, famous rapper. And, and now, and now, I mean, TikTok is, is the formula. It's the same shit. That's why you hear people be like, Jack Harlow is the first uh, album exclusively uh, off of like TikTok hits. Even Doja Cat. People might get mad at me and say like, you know, Doja has stands now. But like Doja Cat's entire album is built around TikTok virality. If you ever listen to any of the songs that did not hit on TikTok, you're like, what the I've never even heard of this shit. Jack Harlow can rap as well, but you know. Doja Cat went viral with a meme. Bitch, I'm a cow. Moo. Right? Uh, I used to play her music all the time. I used to play that song all the time. And Doja Cat can build a song in 10 minutes. She doesn't need TikTok. Dude, 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 dude. It was a meme. And then she got picked and uplifted by the industry. Come the fuck on. I liked the song until she shit on Doja. Oh my God. It, it, the same shit is happening with Yeet as well. Um, before, before Moo, before Moo, Doja Cat was not like, like an entity. Okay. Please stop being brain dead stands right now. Yeah. Harlow can't rap. Your white is showing. I mean, he, he's not bad. Get an entire album. Do well before that song. That's not. Shut the fuck up. You don't drive a Tonka. Okay, guys, stop. <sighs> anyway, true. The Yeet songs I like are the most popular on TikToks. Yeah, but you can actually build you can actually build a sustainable music career off of TikTok, off of TikTok virality, okay? Doja is great at weaponizing and using TikTok to build a brand. Yes, Lil Nas X, I think, does a good job with that, too. These are well-polished artists now as a consequence of the music industry basically picking you for your talent, not specifically in the music uh, space, but your talent in being able to, one, make halfway decent music, unlike Daniel Bergoli, obviously. Maybe that's the reason why people are mad at me, because they didn't understand what I was trying to say. These people do have musical gifts. They do have a musical ability, right? But more importantly than their musical ability is the fact that they are capable of merging their musical ability and, and uh, merge it perfectly with TikTok virality, just virality in general, okay? That's it. Whereas Daniel Bergoli did not have musical ability, but like the industry turned him, turned her into a a you know a platinum song uh, artist basically. Kanye was pretty unknown until Praise God became a TikTok trend. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. No, but that's but do you see the difference between like someone like uh, the people I'm mentioning versus like Kanye West versus Kendrick Lamar versus uh, you know artists that came before the TikTok stuff. Oh my God. He has hundreds of unreleased songs on SoundCloud. And, and please, I implore you all to listen to his music. He has more songs than the hits you hear on TikTok. His post was approved by Wizzy Rich Entertainment. To everyone, you didn't mention talent and music. Let's start a cross-examination of some of the jury. Okay, anyway. Um, if you can't understand that like the new era, if you can't understand the new era of artists are those that aren't like supremely gifted, but instead are capable of maneuvering through the social media landscape and using it to their advantage i don't know what to tell you it's not about like you know their their capabilities as like profoundly talented producers or you know their unique voice or anything like that it quite literally is about how pop and you can get on social media the industry already ha does like a, a mathematical formula they already have like a mathematical equation to make music that's going to be top 40 okay two months because it was kind of good and we didn't want to admit it. Then she started consistently dropping music generating millions of streams. Naturally, all the IG clout demons followed her lead. 
Patty, Boonk, Vicky all started dropping music and all of them were getting big numbers. I would say 80 to 90% of the people were curious, but some people were actually fans of their music. By the end of 2017, the foundation was laid for this nonsensical TVMA shock value Instagram humor. It was in 2018 where it would all videos, reach new man. heights we never could have predicted. By the way, this is uh, the death of the bizarre cloud chase era 2018 Instagram comedy by Patrick CC. Uh, I'm a fan of his videos. This is a very good video. Did. As well. The Instagram cloud wave was becoming a real career. These influencers were actually making money and were building a genuine fan base despite being a mockery. Hip hop pages and media outlets were consumed with this clout culture rather than actual music, which led to a lot of bullshit being promoted and true talent being sidelined. We had this culminate to Lil Tay becoming famous who gained over 1 million followers in two weeks. She was a nine-year-old girl directly influenced by the Lil Pumps, Bad Babies, and Woe Vickies of the world. Balling in the eye gate. I dropped 200 racks on this car, and I'm only nine years old. I got the keys to this car. They even got into a fight. Okay, then do it then. Let's do it. We would later find out this was all orchestrated by Tay's older brother, but in the meantime, millions of people all over the world were indulging in the absolute farce that was the world of Lil Tay. Supreme Patty was linking up with rappers and building genuine relationships. Lil Xan was exploding in popularity. Lil Pump was in his peak. 6 9 was in his peak. Every single rapper was covering their face with tattoos. Adam22's No Jumper YouTube channel was once a place for covering emerging talent, but became one of the biggest media outlets giving these people a platform. Mid-2018, these Instagram warriors were generating more interest and viewership than actual rappers. They were living the high life. Plus, they were all collaborating and working together. These collaborations were making them seem more famous and relevant than they were, which in turn was making them more famous and relevant. Who would have ever thought all you had to do was be as ridiculous as possible, and you would be generating millions of fans? We truly came along way from six second vine videos summer of 2018 would be the peak of this instagram that dude's neck uh is is very thick yes that's his brand and the other dude's neck is very skinny and that's his brand adam 22 era man what a terrible era clout wave according to google trends basically all the people we talked about in this video peaked around may to july of 2018 kind of crazy how that happened shiggy was collaborating with drake fat boy was a household name amongst rappers patty was on ridiculousness at this pee. point he was a certified stuntman bad baby dropped an album with features from lil yachty lil baby ty dolla sign and was doing a whole u.s tour it seemed like this was our new reality instagram stars were the new pop culture but like all things that rise very quickly they come crashing down just as fast. In June of 2018, rapper XXXTentacion passed away, which was a huge loss to the SoundCloud rap community. X was tied in with basically all these Instagram stars. It was a shocking blow to the whole culture. Lil Tay disappeared. The internet figured out that Tay was basically a puppet that was being controlled by her older brother. Once he got exposed, Lil Tay went on Good Morning America. Lil Tay was on Good Morning America to try and save her brother and family's reputation. It didn't work, and she wiped her Instagram clean. She's basically been gone ever since then. Boonk had a really bad fallout on the No Jumper podcast. He was intoxicated and surrounded by people who were not trying to help him. He shot himself multiple times in the leg on accident, but this didn't stop him from continuing his lifestyle. He just kept spiraling down in front of the whole world. He needed help badly. Patty did a good job maintaining his brand. He had genuine relationships with celebrities. Plus, he introduced the world to Wide Neck, Long Neck, and Nick's face, which would continue this circus for a little while. I guess people with strange deformities were the next wave on Instagram? This is where things started to get a little weird even for the fans. The Neck brothers were brought up through Patty, Adam22, and their own Instagrams. If it isn't obvious, Wide Neck and Long Neck got popping because of their bodies. All of their content was them making fun of themselves, women fawning over them in an ironic way. It became a moral battle for the viewers. Am I happy this person is owning their genetic disadvantage and profiting off of it? Or am I just straight up making fun of them? They started dropping music, and it just started to feel like too much of a circus to entertain anymore. From this, we got the blow up of Holy God and Nick's face, who both seemed to be more positive and personable people. Also, Woe Vicky teamed up with Shay D, and she seemed to be very genuine and pleasant. However, people were starting to get tired of the same old jokes, and the shock value was just getting lower and lower. In mid-2019, Boonk was at his lowest moment. He joined a gang seeking love, acceptance, and thinking his career would be saved by his affiliation status. He knew he wasn't a gang member and wanted out of the gang. The members didn't like this for obvious reasons, and he got his jaw destroyed by a punch with some brass knuckles. The result of this was him having his jaw wired shut for six weeks. This inspired him to do a full 180 with his life. He discovered his faith, put all his energy into his religion, dropped the name oh. Boonk, and now goes by John Gabbana.
He dedicates most of his life to positivity and music and on social media. Nobody helped him do this but himself. It's truly rare for us to see someone on social media hit rock bottom. Bro, this is the funniest take. I'm sorry. He trying to beat Kanye so bad, dude. Yo, you guys are so ruthless, dude. The internet is brutal and awful, dude. It's straight up. You just... Oh my god, dude. Then rise up in a positive way. In fact, John and Vicky are a couple now. I don't think there could be any what? two people more perfect for each other. So it's very sweet to see them turn their lives around. Vicky and Bad Baby were basically just influencers. Nobody was even making fun of them anymore because they had already exhausted the few interesting quirks that they had. Bad Baby made out like a bandit, dude. $52 million. I mean, look, it's disgusting. It's gross. So many people were like, oh, thank God she's finally 18. Like, wait, is that is that DJ Academics tweet real, by the way? Because whenever I think of Bad Baby, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And I, I, I still don't know if it was real or not. What was it? Hold on. DJ Academics' Twitter is hacked. <laughs> Classic. Oh, oh, at FBI. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, DJ Academics Libertarian moment. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he said that, except that's literally apparently what millions of people were also feeling because when she turned 18 and she started only every, every pedophile Every pedophile and, and libertarian straight up uh, subbed to her own, which ended up making her $52 million, dude. She made $52 million. So, you know, I guess it's like good for her. Well, bad baby went viral again when she started uh, tanning. But they built an audience of people who really like them now, despite all the bullshit. TikTok kept them both relevant. TikTok was quickly becoming the number one platform for people to spend their time on. I'm not quite sure how these two managed to transition over there well, because all of the other influencers struggled. I think it's because TikTok users were like, oh, mean? they still got like 2.3 million. Views. Oh no, not you again. I came over here to stay away from you. Or maybe IG people just didn't believe that TikTok would get more relevant than Instagram. 6 9 went to jail in 2019. Lil Pump didn't continue his hype and everyone was fed up with his antics. There was no more boonk gang stealing shit and causing chaos. What do you mean, bro? Lil Pimp. Most famous Trump, uh, most famous uh, defender, supporter of Donald Trump. And here we have Little Pimp. <laughs> Believe me, folks. What a bright future America has when you got young minds like Little Pimp saying Trump 2020. The music industry was trying to push industry plant SoundCloud rappers like Baby Goth and Jumex who were so obviously behind the wave of face tats and colored hair. People were mad at Adam22 for even giving these people attention. Viewers realized that they had entertained these spectacles oh, well, I have no idea who this person is. for too long and demanded that Adam cover serious artists again. Hip-hop fans and social media in general were so fed up. It was impossible to tell what was serious and what wasn't, so everyone had trust issues. Instagram comedy took the original spark created by Viners and brought it as low as they could go. I think really the true end of this whole wave was the pandemic. Now nobody was outside. These influence weren't collabing. They weren't taking pics with celebrities or getting invited to music video shoots. Yes, there were more people than ever sitting on social media all day, but the only way you were gonna capitalize on it is if you were genuinely interesting and different. Plus, with the protesting and basically the whole USA catching on fire after the death of George Floyd, nobody was willing to put up with antics and nonsense. So basically, they didn't care to see Supreme Patty squeeze lemons in his eyes. Patty was also at his most depressed and unhealthy point, but he made a change. He started pursuing a healthy lifestyle. No no more drugs, alcohol, or bad foods. He lost a ton of weight and was inspired by John Gabbana to go down the right path. Him and John actually had a boxing match in 2021 in hopes to make some money during the pandemic. The you want everyone with real talent from Vine is in actual TV shows or as a pop and YouTube channel? Um, I guess. It's just about like people who were able to transition well and, and, and were able to diversify, okay? That's it. These days, he's back to stunts and doing the same old stuff from 2017. Some people look at it as nostalgic, others look at it as him trying to recreate a moment that's never going to happen again. From 2020 and beyond, Drewski has been the only person to capitalize on superstardom in the Instagram comedy wave after its peak. And that's for one reason. He's genuinely hilarious. No gimmicks that's or true. bullshit. Just genuinely good comedy. Mario Judah was able to pull some antics and gimmicks that got people's attention, but it didn't last very long and he disappeared after being viral for three months. Yeah, where the 
is Mario Judah. Really during the pandemic, we saw the Twitch streamer wave. People who were able to entertain for multiple hours on end, which we know. Okay, I take it back. This motherfucker didn't put me in this part. Okay, I don't like this guy anymore. None of these IG people could have done. Then recently, we just had- Damn, bro, did not put me in the- Okay, that, uh, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, no, this guy, not it, bro, not it. The Island Boys, who were the 2021 version of this whole Instagram clout wave. The problem is, we've seen this before. We went down this route. Face tat filled rappers with no talent that allow the internet to bully them for attention. It was an exhausted formula. We all entertained it for a month or so because it was nostalgic, but their rise and fall was faster than anyone we had ever seen before. It was a great era. A lot of the comedy was based on shock value though, which doesn't age well. Plus, you constantly have to keep raising the bar, which is unsustainable. It's unfortunate that our entertainment was at the expense of other people's livelihoods and sanity. We are currently in a cultural reset. Due to the sheer amount of people that successfully or unsuccessfully attempted this clout attention grabbing nonsense, it just won't work again. What will the next wave be? I'm not so sure. I have never heard them rap before. Please don't do this to me. What? I mean, dude, the rise and fall of people like this is like kind of weird to see. Uh, kind of weird to watch. <sighs> um, it is crazy though, because it is crazy. Because like while they're popping, you only think about them like as as like profoundly fortunate people, and they are profoundly fortunate people, making it in an making it in an industry that's like highly competitive and in, almost impossible to succeed in. What is this the pop star factory manufactured by disney disney has been manufacturing pop stars for the past 20 years they missed out on britney spears they struck gold with hillary duff we all this know is the new wave just tiktok i mean that is yeah um have you watched morbius yet no i'm not going to i refuse to watch being the age where it's weird to see all the different crazies on the internet alone has had since like oh five didn't mention greta thurnberg the biggest clout chaser lol what that would have been pretty funny if he turned around and added Greta Thunberg into a YouTube essay about Boonk Gang and Patty Supreme, bro. That's awesome. Like, your brain... Oh, dude, the conservative brain is pretty funny. It, it, it is really unintentionally hilarious shit. Can you imagine? And then the biggest clout chaser of them all, Greta Thunberg. Melon video on the industry forcing artists to make TikToks. All right. I've never watched hey, a everyone, Melon video. Hey, everyone, Anthony. I've never watched a Melon video on stream before. Who would you fight, you think? I have someone in mind that I think I could beat. Really? And he's like similar size. Yeah. That's why, you know, I think I think I could fight him. Actually, in fact, I think I could wipe the floor with him, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ludwig would cook him, dude. Ludwig's ass is like two Cody Co's. I think I would beat the shit out of him, <laughs> to be honest. Who? Ludwig. Wow. Yeah, dude. You think? Don't you think? He's kind of big, dude. He's a wimp. Beaming. Oh, well, beaming what? What's up? Oh! Yo! Whoa. What's up, Cody? Whoa! I, I didn't mean- Whoa! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh yeah? Oh. Keep, oh. keep my name out oh. your wife's oh. mouth! Oh! Oh! <laughs> What's up, dude? What up, dude? Good to see you. Nice. I don't think you'd win. I don't think he went either. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>